where does BNI go from here? I mean, 5,000. 5,000, almost 5,400 groups, 40 right. countries. Yep. Well, there are a lot of other countries left in the world, and we can still open a lot of Lichtenstein. countries. Lichtenstein. <laughs> Lichten no, we have chapters in Lichtenstein. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, we can, we're continuing to grow. We opened about about 500 groups in our first 11 years, mm. and we opened 5,000 groups in our second 11 years. Mm -hmm. So our growth, uh, we're in a very strong growth curve. Uh, we're in an in international uh, global recession, mm. and. Uh, people need referrals more than ever mm -hmm. in a recessionary economy, and so our growth continues to be substantial during this recession. You are the the, the, the face, or the you actually you're the face of BNI. Yes. You are at, up at the top of the mountain of networking. You travel all over the world. Do you ever get tired? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's it's something you love, yeah. obviously. But yes. But do you ever get tired? Do you ever say, I want to have my own space? So, yeah. So what do you do in your own time? Well, you know what? Uh, do you think about networking? Question. Well, uh, uh, no, not <laughs> always. Not always. You know what? I, I, people ask me sometimes, because I wrote a book called Masters of Success. Mm -hmm. And so I get a question sometimes from the stage, because I do a lot of presentations. Mm -hmm. And people will say, how do you have balance in your life? Mm. How do you have balance? Because I've written 11 books. I run an international organization. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, things. I'm reasonably busy. And so mm -hmm. how do you create balance? And I, and I tell my audience, I said, here's the secret to balance. You ready? Forget about it. You'll never have balance. <laughs> if you're an entrepreneur, you're never going to have balance. But you can have mm -hmm. harmony. You can, and it's more than semantics, because balance says, I'm going to work this number of hours, and I'm going to have this number of hours off, and it's going to be balanced. Mm. And you're never going to have that, especially if you own a business. You're going to be crazy busy sometimes. Mm. But if you don't take time to do the things you love in addition to your work, mm. then you're not going to have harmony in your life. I'm, I'm convinced that I'm not going to turn 70 and say, gee, I, I wish I spent more time at the office. Hindsight's a very bad word. <laughs> that, that, so, uh, you know, you have to create harmony. Mm. And for me, harmony is taking time off. Um, I, I've got a place up in the mountains, and I spend a fair amount of time. As a matter of fact, I work the entire month of August mm. up at my uh, lake home. And uh, I work a few weeks and take a few weeks off, and that's one of the ways I help to create harmony in mm. my life. And harmony is very important for good business or just I good living? Is. Well, yeah. for, yeah, mm. I think it's good for business because mm. I come back... Um, um, you know, re-energized, mm. uh, and I think it's it's certainly good for life to have harmony. Is writing a relaxation tool for you? No, writing's a job. <laughs> yeah, I sit down and and you know I schedule off six or seven or eight hours, uh, mm. usually one day a week. That's my block of time to write, mm. and uh, I have to get so many words done by that that period of time, or or else I don't stop. Mm. The twenty-nine percent solution. Yeah title of one of your books. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> I mean, it's a rest of really, it's, it's, a, it's a, like a thing, 29%. What is that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it, it's based on an article I wrote a few years ago called Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, and Six Degrees of Separation. <laughs> and the question that we pose, and the question we mm. pose in the beginning of the book is, what do they all have in common? And the answer is they're all urban legends. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to tackle Santa or the Easter Bunny. I'll leave them alone. Mm -hmm. But let's talk about this uh, six degrees thing. You know the idea that we're all separated by everyone else on the planet by six degrees yes. or six steps? It's not true. It's a fallacy. Never was true. It's actually based on studies done by Stanley Milgram in the 1960s, where he had a group of people, over 200 people in Oklahoma, and he gave them a packet of material, and he said, get this packet of material to somebody in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And they found that on average, it took about six steps for them to get this packet of material to somebody, to somebody, to somebody, to get it to this guy. About six steps. Mm -hmm. So what's my problem? My problem is that only 29% of the participants ever got the packet through. 71% did not. Mm -hmm. After seven, eight, 10, 100 attempts, they failed. They mm -hmm. did not get it through. So 29% could find the person. 71% couldn't find their car keys. They were lost. Mm -hmm. And so we say we're all separated by six degrees when in fact only one out of three of us is. And what we try to do with this book is to show people how you can become mm. part of the one out of three, part of the 29%, mm. how you can build a powerful personal network so you can be connected to everyone else on the planet mm. by six degrees. Who thought of the title? That's just fantastic. Uh, 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 I did. In a brainstorming session with After my co-author. Uh, maybe, possibly. No, actually it was on a phone <laughs> telebridge with, with uh, the publisher and mm. Michelle, mm. Uh, my co-author, 
and we were just brainstorming titles. Mm. Uh, Santa Claus, Easter Bunny, and Six Degrees of Separation was a little long. That's fantastic. <laughs> a, almost a mini series. <laughs> yeah, just about. If you had all your B and I compatriots there, or yeah. your, or your, uh, and and friends from the last, let's go right back, say twenty or thirty years, yeah. and they're all standing around Dr. Ivan Meisner. How would they describe you in a word? Passionate. And if you were to describe yourself to them in a word, how would you describe that? A closet introvert. <laughs> that is, that's, sorry, there's more than one word. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I, passionate. I'm definitely passionate about what I do, and I think it comes across to people. Right. And they and they uh, they see that. What a lot of people don't see is that uh, I'm also a little bit of an introvert, which kind of uh, I just did. A, I just wrote Are a you blog. An introvert? On it. Yeah, yeah. Can you believe that? No. It, it, it's a, it's called a situational introvert. Mm. I wrote an article about it recently. Um, uh, it's called OMG, I'm an introvert. And uh, <laughs> and what happened was I was I was uh, talking to my wife mm. at dinner, and uh, I, I was talking to her about having to do this or that, and you know, and I said mm. to her, Oh, you know, I'm an extrovert. And she looks at me and she says, uh, uh, "No, honey, you're, you're an introvert." And I'm like, no, "What do you mean I'm an introvert? I've written 11 books, I'm a New York Times bestseller, I run the world's largest business networking organization. I am not an introvert." She said, "Yeah, honey, you're you're an introvert." So my wife's pretty smart, and I'm figuring if she's telling me I'm an introvert, I, I better look into this. So I got on the internet, took a test. You what? I, it said I was a situational introvert, that I recharge my batteries by being alone, mm. by thinking. Uh, by not being in groups, but in, in certain situations, I can be very ex extroverted. But I'm a situational uh, intro uh, extrovert, mm -hmm. so only in certain situations do I become extro extroverted. And the future, when you when you finish with networking, yeah. I, I suppose then we just roll over and die. But perhaps you can become a full-time magician because you love <laughs> you love magician. You love the whole the whole magic scene. Don't I you? do, I do. But I'm an amateur magician. Uh, member of the uh, Academy of Magical Arts, the Magic Castle yeah. here in Los Angeles, uh, but uh, definitely an amateur magician. I leave, I leave the professional shows to the professionals. Well, good luck with <laughs> whatever you do. Thank you. Uh, this has been Pure Magic. Thank you very much. Thank you. He's regarded as one of the world's great guitarists. Wadi Wachtel joins Mike Ryan coming up next on Who's Who Speaks.